Scott is clearly a superstar of the United States uh, space program. So Scott was really our, in some sense, the godfather of our Mars program as you see it today. We voted him most likely to succeed and uh, I would say he certainly um, far exceeded our expectations. Scott Hubbard was born December 27, 1948. He grew up in Elizabethtown, Kentucky. As a kid, Scott picked up the guitar and had a strong attraction to science, rockets, and space. When Scott was nine years old, the world was stunned to learn that the Soviet Union had launched the first satellite, Sputnik, into orbit. A man-made celestial body for the first time in history overcame terrestrial gravity and flew into space. I think Sputnik was one of those things that changed the world. I built a rocket <laughs> like Sputnik. Well, just don't blow yourself up. Well, before we got to town, he already had a reputation in the neighborhood. There were a few explosions, I think, in his basement before he <laughs> was successful in uh, launching a few rockets in the neighborhood. I don't think any of them actually made it into orbit, but he was known as the rocket boy in the neighborhood. Always experimenting, always uh, trying to do more. Scott's innate curiosity and predilection for science made him a remarkable straight-A student. He graduated in 1966 as a valedictorian and a national merit finalist. He um, was president of the Beta Club. He was on the varsity debate team. He was also editor-in-chief of the school newspaper. A founder's scholarship brought him to Vanderbilt University, where he studied astronomy. He kind of struggled in, uh, in college deciding really what direction he wanted to go because he was also a very good musician and was considering uh, music as uh, the direction he'd go. As it turned out, Scott was recruited by the Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory where his career as a scientist began. Then, in 1987, he was recruited by NASA Ames Research Center as a division staff scientist working on space exploration projects. Scott Hubbard could have made billions of dollars, you know, in any venture he'd like. He's that kind of guy. He, he, he's smart and he gets it. And, and instead, he has served our nation. I suspect Scott was, was excited about, uh, about it all. I mean, it used to be you had to get in a copper wagon to explore, but, uh, but now, in essence, you're exploring through the capabilities of the spacecraft that are built here on Earth. So my suspicion is that, that Scott was pretty turned on about being an explorer. Scott's contributions to space exploration at NASA were vast. He was project manager for the highly successful Mars Pathfinder mission. It was his idea to use airbags to land the rover safely and economically on the surface of Mars. Scott also managed the Lunar Prospector mission to the moon in 1998, which most famously discovered strong evidence of water at the lunar poles. He also founded NASA's Astrobiology Institute, devoted to studying life in the universe. Two months apart, two major mission losses, and we had to figure out what to do. Risk was way beyond what was acceptable for a program like this, and the result was failure. The, the Mars missions, when they failed, called into question some very fundamental things about NASA and whether it could continue to explore into deep space. For a time there, it looked as if the United States was going to abandon its intention of exploring Mars with robots. I think a lot of people were kind of, what well, the right word is to say, but fed up with, with Mars. Um, and so NASA said, we, listen, we've got to have one person responsible for the Mars program. In 2000, Scott Hubbard is named NASA's first Mars czar. He took the position of Mars czar at NASA headquarters to try to rejuvenate, resuscitate, whatever word you want to use, the Mars exploration program. There, there, are, there are smart scientists, there are smart engineers, and there are good program managers. He's one of the few, he's one of those guys that can do all of those things, and that is actually a rare combination. His job was to sell an idea, to architect 
uh, decades worth of exploration of the planet Mars. New orbiters as well as these rovers, Scott was right behind it, figuring out what they're supposed to do, what kind of science, how that science would be coupled together to make an integrated whole. Think of the stakes. There was a lot on the line. So Scott was right there pushing all the way uh, in a very, very challenging time so that we could prove both to NASA and NASA can prove to the, to the country and the world that we really did have the right stuff after those two failures. And sure enough, it all worked out. To everyone's relief, Scott's leadership and his team ushered in a long period of successful Mars missions, yielding a treasure trove of vital scientific data. Later, Scott became director of the NASA Ames Research Center in 2002. While there, Scott Hubbard also played a vital role in understanding what happened in the 2003 Columbia shuttle tragedy. Scott Hubbard says, you know, I think we ought to see what happens when you fire some of this foam at the leading edge of a shuttle wing. What, would the, what will happen? And NASA didn't want to do it, which was astounding. But here he was, the sole NASA employee on the Columbia Accident Investigation Board insisted that this test go forward. They counted it down to the firing of the gun, and the gun, you know, boom. That foam hit the carbon reinforced leading edge uh, of the shuttle, just like the panel that was struck when Columbia launched, and it made a hole the size of a manhole cover. To totally drop my jaw and said, there it is. And at first, I went, yes. And then I went, oh. Because on the part of me said, OK, we've demonstrated it. But then part of me said, oh, this is how these people actually died. Since 2007, Scott has been a professor at Stanford University mentoring students, and preparing the next generation of engineers, scientists, and dreamers. Throughout his endeavors, Scott Hubbard has earned nearly countless accolades and awards, including NASA's Exceptional Service Medal, an honorary PhD, the Van Karman Medal in Astronautics, and the Carl Sagan Memorial Award. Believe it or not, these are just some of the highlights of Scott's inspiring and expansive career. Beyond a doubt, Scott Hubbard has left an indelible mark on Earth, but other planets as well. As of today, there is no Planetary Exploration Hall of Fame. I guarantee you that when that Hall of Fame is created, one of the first to be initiated will be Scott Hubbard. You know, my hat is off to him, my congratulations to him, uh, a proud son of Kentucky. If I had a a little bit of bourbon to toast him right now, I would. You deserve all of the honors and uh, accolades that can be bestowed upon you because you've earned them the old-fashioned way. Uh, you earned them up a farming, so congratulations. Mm -hmm.